Hey guys, Henry here. Alrighty, so now that we got all the formalities and the stories out of the way, it's time to actually get down to it. So first thing you need to know is just a couple things, just a little bit more, nothing more, just don't worry, no more stories. So first things first, be careful with this. This is actually a contact allergen in case it gets on you. So most people have an actual allergy reaction to this thing. Some people will have just a regular rash on the arm or anything, or just some kind of rash. Other people will have a large reaction. The thing you don't want is a large reaction, so we want to definitely be careful and keep it off your skin. Uh, the first time I put on the suit, without that, I had a large rash right here. It was pretty bad. It didn't go away for a couple hours, which is still pretty good, I guess. I don't know. But basically, caution is necessary. Also, this thing is going to come in a total of 11 pieces. Now, we're going to tackle it one by one. The first thing we're going to tackle is the arm. Alrighty, so now we've kind of changed locations. We're going to be working here just because I know it's a little cramped and messy, but it's where everything I work with is at, and plus I have my other workstation is outside, and I really don't like going out there. So anyway, down to it. We're going to be go ahead and start construction on the arm. So first thing you really got to know is that this time around, it's going to be working a little bit different. I went ahead and made this. It's it's somewhat of a prototype of the arm. This is what it's going to look like afterwards. Not fully, of course, this needs to be patched up and needs to be put over so that it pivots just the right way. So let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when I take out the jacket. Alright. So, that being said, it's going to look a lot like this. Now, with these things, you really want to be flexible in it. You don't want to be uncomfortable in it the whole entire day or during a photo shoot or something. Anyway, with this arm, I made a few different attachments. The first one was kind of... It was pretty rough. So, like, for instance, it was pretty much just double layer tape, just like this. You know, just front, back, just like that. I didn't have any sleeve or anything. I didn't even come up with a sleeve until I really needed to that day. So I kind of worked with it and... I think I used like a piece of cloth and I wrapped it in the inside. It made it a lot harder to move around in. Um, second year, I worked on it and I made a sleeve for it. I made like a sock, but in the end, I made it really, really tough to move around in. So I decided, well, third year, all right, I'm going to try to see if I can work it in without having to put the whole sock on. That did not work at all. So this year, I came up with a little idea, which I know I should have come up with it sooner, but again, time constraints. Those times I was working on a shorter time frame and I didn't have to film. This time I give it the exact 150 days, which we're already down quite a few days, so running a bit behind schedule, but luckily this project isn't that slow. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and put this side and this side together. So one side, painter's tape, and the side, duct tape. Luckily, I managed to find the correct colors that I need for the actual arm length, and I'll put up a picture in a bit. There it is. That, as you can see, it's going to be the... The arms are going to be the right color for this one. I managed to find the right color, which is amazing, which never really happens. So this time, the construction is a little bit different. So it's going to run a little bit more complex with it. Before, this part used to be completely closed, and you'd have, like, this giant thing that stuck out to here and was really messy looking. This year I managed to make it a little bit more nicer. I'm still working out the kinks a bit, but basically it's just going to be this flat. That's it. So that whenever I extend it, it doesn't look so bad and it's not like out to here bumpy. And when I flex it like this, see like I gotta really get down this flap here, it's going to look a lot better, a lot more clean not as constricting. Over at the shoulders, I want to make it a little bit longer so that it reaches out to here even when I extend it like this so that when it comes down, the slack's not so bad. So for the shoulder, and this is kind of a little bit of a critical bit, I decided to create less attachment to the arm itself while kind of giving a cover here. So that way whenever it moves, it kind of freely pivots a little bit and it still looks nice. Well, as nice as an arm made of duct tape can be, but it's also easy to slip off. So, just like that. 
So anyways, let's go ahead and get started on the construction of it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the base frame of these. I really want to create the right measurement for cylinders so that it comes out to exactly the way I need it to be for the arm. And then after that, I'm going to create like a ring around the shoulder and right under the armpit. So that way it's going to extend down, connect each other. And then I'll get to the to the inner arm in a bit because that part's a little tricky. But we'll get there. Alrighty, so this is basically a 10 inch long piece of tape that I collected together. So what we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to make somewhat of a structure like this. Right, so it's going to be, for me, I'm just going to need to make 10, 10, 10 at the base. Well, I might need to make that a little bigger. And then I'm going to make it a little bit shorter on my end so that it'll fit my hand through. The reason why I'm doing that is because I actually needed to fit through the gauntlet itself and the glove so that whenever I put it on, it's not looking too bulky and it's not gonna have like little bends. It's already gonna have enough bends as it is. I don't really want to make it any more wrinkled as it is. All right, so just went ahead and went and did it for you just to check it out. So what I did here was I managed to put all the frameworks together. This is gonna be for the left arm. It's going to look a little something like this on me. And I already resized it to where it's going to look a lot better once it's framed up. I know it looks messy, but bear with me. It's going to look a lot better. See that? Now, of course, I actually fixed up the back as well here. So it should look a lot better as well. Yeah, it's already coming coming together, so it's gonna be good. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is we gotta patch up the framework here and here. So that, that way it makes the complete arm. All right, so now that we got that done, let's go ahead and take a look at the left arm. Sorry if I'm sweating, it's really stuffy in here. So let me go ahead and put that. So I made a lot of observations to the left arm. It's gonna have a couple of differences from the right arm. I, I, basically, I basically found a lot of the problems that I tackled the second time around with. The right arm is good in a lot of ways, but needed a little bit of improvement. Like for instance, in the right arm, this is a little too stiff, so instead of doing it just like strip after strip after strip, connecting to each frame, I instead kind of worked it the opposite direction. And I made one framework, link those together, and then kept going like that, and then on the inside, link the framework again, vertically. And then it just made a more solid, more round seam to it, to where there's no like diamondy edge here. So then after the framework, which is basically wrist, here, 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 shoulder, I essentially built it up like that, keeping the separate. Now the tricky part is the inside of the arm and the elbow, which both parts were pretty, they can be pretty tough, but I found a way around it this time. So instead of having the elbow uh, rest like that, and it's just like a big ball of like what could be the movements of the elbow, I instead made it so that the, when it's bent like this, it's at its full flexing point. It's entirely a strip, you know? But when it flexes over, I made it so that this part doesn't move anywhere. So when it flexes over, it's just a little strip that folds in on itself right here. So with the shoulders, instead of making like a free form version here, and I'm going to go back and make these exact fixes later on the right arm. But for now, I just wanted to show the left arm and the differences and how it went. So for the right arm, how it's kind of a little loose here, I made it a little more tighter around here so that it still has that bend and can still move fairly easily. But I also made it so that it goes straight up as a frame going around. And I made the frame a lot wider. Now to fix the problem of seeing the armpit here, I would either suggest, well in my position, what I did was I, I'm actually going to leave that open for now. I might just have it for air purposes, I might just have it for um, 
I don't know, I might actually just cover it up with spandex or something, or I might just make it a whole entire duct tape farm, but it's gonna be a lot harder to put on that way, that's why I'm kind of reframing from it. Uh, either way, so the next part that I have to do, I kind of want to leave the gloves and gauntlet for later. The next part I gotta do is the torso. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that next episode. So this way my hands are free and I can go ahead and take a look at it and I'd have to put on the gloves. Either way, um, hope that was enjoyable and uh, catch you guys later. Thanks. I'm gonna get a pie pickle. I love that our blooper thingies usually have something to do with food. Just joking. It's a good pickle though. <laughs> I can't say what brand it is, but mostly because I don't know. I don't know pickle. It's a good brand.